people who are joining us online today, and those of you who are in different parts of the country or the world, we're glad that you could take the time to remember Bill's life. And, uh, my name is Ryan Jiro. I'm the pastor here at Bill's Edward. Bill has been for a very short time in his last few months of his life, uh, but we have certainly enjoyed having him as part of our church family and, and getting to know him. So we're glad that you have joined us today. Uh, I would like to open our time together uh, by reading from Scripture. This passage that I'm going to read in John chapter 11 is, is from a time in Jesus' life where he was talking to friends of his who had just lost a loved one. Uh, you may know the story. It's the story of his friend Lazarus who had passed away. Of course, we know the end of that story with uh, the raising of Lazarus, but what you may not know is that this family was probably one of the closest friends that Jesus had during his earthly ministry. Uh, he often spent time at their house when he would travel to Jerusalem. And so he ministered to them uh, during a very difficult period in their life and pointed them to the truth that is more important than anything in this world. So listen to this passage, John chapter 11, verses 17 to 27. Now when Jesus came, he found out that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is coming into the world. Uh, Bill Gates believed that Jesus is the Christ who came into the world and died for our sins and offered us everlasting life through faith in him. And because of that, uh, Bill Gates, even though he has died, yet he lives today. And we celebrate that. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this opportunity that we get to gather together and remember a life well lived. Uh, Lord, we know that Bill uh, was, was close to those who have joined together today. Uh, he had a deep impact on the lives of those who were gathered in this room, but also those who are joining us online. Uh, and Lord, certainly many, many others who are not with us today. Uh, he had a lasting impact on their life. But Lord, we are thankful that um, the greatest thing that Bill Gates ever did was to trust Christ as his Savior. Uh, Father, it is that truth and that truth alone that turns this from a day of only mourning and grieving uh, to a day where uh, victory has overcome the grave. And so, Father, we pray that the hope of the resurrection, the promise of the resurrection, um, would continue to instill hope in the lives of these who are gathered uh, who have lost a loved one. Uh, and Father, we thank you that, that their grief is not as those who have no hope, uh, because we know where Bill is today in, the, in your presence, enjoying that which we look forward to. And so, Father, we pray that you would speak to us now through the power of your word and also through the power of remembrances of this life that we celebrate today. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to introduce to you now uh, Elijah Ray. Elijah, as most of you know, is a very close friend and former colleague of Bill's, and he's going to kind of lead us through the next portion of the service. Thank you. Grace and peace to all of you. Uh, it is our honor uh, to serve in this capacity today. And um, uh, those of you who knew Bill well, 
uh, knew, you know that Bill was a great manager. And one of his specific instructions was to make sure that he has a good home going, a good service. And, 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 I'm, and, I, and I'm, I kid you not, I mean, this is, this is what he said. He said, he said, have a good service for us. And this is a conversation that he and I had just about a week after he had that initial uh, diagnosis. Um, he said, have a good service, tape it, and email it to me. <laughs> he did, that's, 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 that's what he said. And look, there, there, all of us in this place have been touched by Bill's life in one way or the other. Every one of us here. And, and so we wanted to pick some people to remember Bill. Um, and so uh, you could, if you have a program, so we picked some people that we know. Bill is close to, again, most people in this room. Uh, but Benny Jen, uh, Diane Lohman, Roger McFarland, who traveled all the way from the West Coast, is here, and Arts Thomason, uh, CEO of Sunland, all are going to uh, come and bring some uh, remarks. Sam Clark, I didn't know you were going to be here. I would have asked you to come, and in fact, um, if, if you feel so compelled, we would, we would ask you as well. Um, but uh, Benny could not be here, and Benny's a very close friend of, of Bill's and the family, and, and he's in Canada, and because of travel restrictions, could not make it. Uh, but he recorded a video. And so we're gonna play that video, and then after that, uh, we asked Diane Loman to come, then Roger, and then Arch, in that order. Thank you. Thank you, Anaya, for the opportunity to share our thoughts about Bill. First of all, I'd like to say to Brian and Karen that Pat and I love and admire your parents. Your father used to say that we were friends for life, and we are going to miss him immensely. I think that our memories of their warm friendship will be with us for a very long time. Brian and Karen, please know that there will always be a place for you in our hearts, in our home, and nothing would please us more than to have you come and visit with us. It would be an honor. Bill Gates was an exceptional leader. His business acumen was obvious, but I think what set him apart was the way he inspired us all. Bill never pulled rank or resort to intimidation. It was just not his style. He was the embodiment of the servant leader. He was sincere and empathetic. He listened and he coached us and made us all grow. He was loyal and he was kind and egoless. He had the calm demeanor that inspired confidence, grace under pressure as they call it. And he had that rare ability to get us all aligned towards the greater goal. I remember at the time when Bill was promoted to take on the global leadership role. And there was some doubt, especially among the Europeans, as to Bill's effectiveness in the international arena. I had the privilege of working closely with him, and I can tell you that within a matter of months and without pulling rank, Bill had gained the full cooperation, not only from the Belgians, the Spanish and the Germans, but also the French. I do not believe that this could have been achieved quite so effortlessly by anyone other than Bill Gates. Bill and Ruth Ann were the most delightful company, and Pat and I always looked forward to their visits, and we will cherish the many happy memories of our times together. Their sense of humor, their love of dogs, art, culture, travel, and fine cuisine gave us much common ground. 
Bill was an avid reader and had a deep interest in history and spirituality. He was always curious about different points of view. He loved gardening, cooking, fishing, and the outdoors, not to mention a manic interest in football. In short, a very complete and interesting human being. We will remember Bill Gates as a loyal friend who started from humble beginnings, reached the pinnacle of his profession, raised a beautiful family, and never lost sight of what really matters. Bill Gates was a true officer and a gentleman. We will miss him. Yes, I'm getting old and I was afraid I was going to fall. <laughs> when um, Elijah asked me to say a few words about Bill, um, it's a little awkward because when you're looking back on your life, a lot of what you're going to say is a reflection of yourself. And as many of you know me, I'm feel I'm rather humble, so I don't like to talk about myself, but through this message, I hope you will see what Bill meant to me and also to my family. So there are three men that have had a profound impact on my life. The first man is my father, Dante Zonfrilli. And my father taught me about having an exceptional work ethic. He said, whether it's at home or whether it's at work, you're to give 120%. My father also taught me about being loyal and that you are representing yourself to your friends, your family, and your employer. The second person, man who has had just such an impact on my life is my husband, Blake Gordon Lohman. And Blake taught me how to love. He taught me social graces. He encouraged me and has supported me for the last 46 years. He is a man that has motivated me, guided me, and coached me. And with the utmost, he has believed in me. And then there was Bill Gates. Bill is a servant, was a servant leader. He certainly was a teacher and a mentor. He inspired me to accomplish more than I would, thought I would ever be able to achieve. Bill saw in me a rough diamond, as well as he did in many other people. And he inspired me to accomplish more than I ever thought I would in my entire life. Bill was, had a way about him. He would share a vision with you, and then he would sit back to see what you would do with that thought. And, what, and he did that with me several times. And he wanted to see if you would take that vision and turn it into reality. So those of us that took the challenge, we were inspired by him, and we also wanted to show him that we could do it, and we could do it well, and we wanted him to be proud of us. Bill really cared about his workforce. Bill related to his employees. He wanted to get to know them. And he told me, he said, you need to listen to your employees and you need to understand their ideas and their suggestions. 
And on many occasions he said to me, take care of the people and the people will take care of the business. On the last time that I met with Bill, I asked him if there was anything I could do for him. And he said, no, he said, I'm good. I'm prepared and most of all, I'm at peace. I will miss Bill. I will miss his inspiration. I will miss his counsel. I will miss his endearing smile. But most of all, I will miss that twinkle in his eye that said, I'm proud of you. Well, it's an honor and a privilege to be asked by Elijah to say a few words about Bill. My name is Roger McFarlane, and I was the CEO of UTI uh, worldwide uh, for quite a few years. And I got to work with Bill for about 10 years before he retired. Um, joining me, or all of us in spirit today, are a number of former UTI people who couldn't be here uh, today, and they asked me uh, to share their condolences with Brian and with Carol. Karen, sorry. First of all, Jean Ochi, who was the uh, Chief Marketing Officer for UTI. He lives in Los Angeles. Carlos Escario from Spain, uh, who ran uh, the European operations for UTI. John Hextel, who lives in Los Angeles, and he was Bill's counterpart uh, in UTI. He ran the freight forwarding business. There was Thurso Berenzi. Uh, he was responsible for Latin American business. Uh, and then my business partner, Peter Thorrington, who was president of the company, and he lives in Los Angeles, and Tiger Vessels, who was chairman of UTI, and he lives in South Africa. Um, all of them are sending condolences to the entire family of Bill and Ruth Ann. Um, I would like to talk, we've heard already from from Binny and from Diane, and I would like to talk specifically about uh, Bill's forceful leadership and his exemplary character that he displayed in the time that I worked with him. Uh, he had phenomenal personal empathy, the ability to listen and to engage with all the people around him. With his engineering background, he had a process approach to problem solving and solutions. He always spoke his mind. Those of us that worked with Bill knew that you were gonna hear what he thought about an issue. He was very disciplined and duty bound. And I think that comes from uh, his marine uh, background. Uh, he had a knack for hiring talent, and we've already heard from Diane about that, and his ability to nurture that talent and to support that talent uh, so that uh, the team around him grew to deliver what he had in mind. Uh, I think also that the words that I've heard from people uh, in preparing for the ceremony is that Bill was a fine gentleman. I think those were the words that came up most often, and I certainly uh, echo them. I'd like to share three quick examples of Bill's character and leadership. The first one was um, 
his courage and his ability to take on a challenge. When UTI acquired Standard Corporation, it was already a fine organization and Bill's uh, leadership, he was president of the company at the time and it was a leader in the industry. And over time, uh, Bill was asked to take on the challenges to look after businesses in Canada, as you heard from Benny, and there were other companies in Canada as well, in Mexico, other parts of the world. And eventually, he took on the challenge, despite expressing to me his misgivings about the distribution business, we eventually acquired three distribution companies and Bill agreed to take on the leadership for that. Uh, and he did a wonderful job, of course, to the extent that in the end, uh, the contract logistics and distribution business represented about half of UTI's total business and more than half of the number of people that worked in UTI around the world. So that shows uh, Bill's ability to take on a challenge. The second example is his tenacity and persistence. Just down the road here at Spartanburg is BMW. Some of you may not realize, but that that plant, when it first got going, was making the X5, and it became the basis uh, for the SUV family of cars that uh, BMW built uh, for, the, for their entire worldwide uh, distribution. UTI, under Bill's leadership, negotiated to help BMW get that going with logistics and assembly line uh, solutions. Eventually, there were 1,500 UTI people working in that plant and Bill demonstrated a phenomenal tenacity and persistence in negotiating with the people from Stuttgart or wherever they were in Germany, uh, tough-minded people. And so uh, uh, it's another attribute that we hear about Bill's mentoring, but boy, when he got in the negotiating room, he was a tough cookie. The third example, was Bill had the ability to see the big picture as well as to manage the detail. And that is a rare quality. Uh, one day Bill came along and said to me, you know, we're going to get uh, uh, Walmart. And um, I couldn't believe it, but he eventually, with many negotiations in Bentonville, persuaded Walmart to award the biggest contract in their existence to UTI, and he negotiated to make sure that uh, Walmart understood that UTI would make a profit handling this contract. And eventually there were 1,800 people managing a complex of 4 million square feet of warehouse. So, yet at the same time, if you met Bill and you went to a meeting, he would insist that at the beginning of the meeting there would be a safety minute and safety would be discussed at the top of the agenda, the details of what was happening on the ground. So I'd like to end with a little story about Bill and his name, which uh, created a lot of uh, interesting moments and I wanted to share his sense of humor about this. There was one time where he was invited to go down to Brazil to go to Sao Paulo to help with a customer presentation. And the people, the management down there sent a message back to Bill saying, look out for us at the airport, there will be a sign saying Bill Gates. And he went back and he said, I understand in Brazil that a lot of famous people get kidnapped. So maybe you shouldn't put up my name. <laughs> Rather put up UTI. So I, I uh, would like to um, say that uh, Bill had an impact on so many people. And uh, I would like to end by 
saluting him, and I hope he can hear, that we uh, look forward to celebrating uh, his life as we uh, continue today. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that spoke. Brian and Karen, good to see you. I laughed, Elijah, when you said Bill said send you an email. He told me the worst trouble he ever got into at UTI was he gets this big job, 4,000 reports. And IT keeps calling him because they've sent him this new cool computer. And he, and he said, oh yeah, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Well, finally, IT sent somebody to Bill's office. And he was using the laptop as a, as a uh, doorstop to his office. <laughs> and that was Bill Gates, wasn't it? I first heard the name Bill Gates in 1997. I will never forget it. I hear the name Bill Gates, then I hear the name Elijah Ray, and then I hear a lot of colorful words right after that. I'm a new salesman in the business, and Bill and Elijah had just taken our largest client right from under us. So my first thoughts about Bill and Elijah were, were not positive ones, but I would see them throughout the years at work conferences or CSCMP, and I got to know Elijah. I mean, everybody loves Elijah, right? So we would talk and we would see Bill. Now Bill, I never got to talk to. He was always on stage or had a bunch of customers with him, and he was a little intimidating to me. And so fast forward to 2012, I'm at the work conference again, and I'm sitting in the lobby and everyone's having drinks. And I see this lady and I sit down and she sits down right next to me and we talk for a half hour. And she is the nicest lady. And we're just having fun. Well, that's Ruth Ann Gates. I didn't know Ruth Ann. Bill walks out of the bathroom and sits down and I'm trying to put these two together. And I just realized he has to be a great guy. So two hours later, sitting and talking with Bill, had never had a five minute conversation with him. We set up lunch for a month later in Charleston. We have a two hour lunch. He has been retired now two years. He's sitting on the beach in Pauly's. I've been running this company for two years, not necessarily knowing what I'm doing. He needed a challenge and boy, he found one. And that was, he became the chairman of Sunland at that lunch. And Bill, in, in thinking about this, thinking back, reflecting on this, we were a ship without a rudder, and Bill was our captain. But you guys know Bill. He didn't just show up with a rudder. He brought sail. He brought buoys. He brought rowers. And I mean, he jumped in. And as, look, I had never had the experience to work with someone who was a leader like that guy. And you know, hey, I'm fortunate. And so are you guys. I'm seeing so many people from Columbia people that, I'm talking to a guy the other day, he's like, yeah, I'm flying down to see you, Don, from New Jersey. This is what life is about, right, relationships. So anyway, that was nine years ago, and Bill's changed our organization. And so many new faces are here because of Bill Gates. And uh, we took a trip in March, Brian, Bill, and I, we had a great, great trip. Bill was a traveler, he was such an interesting guy, well-read. We had so many conversations and we're sitting on the back deck and we're looking at St. John and we just had this great dinner and he said, hey, I had the same wife for 51 years. I have two great children who I love. I've had so many great friends and I've had just a great career. And we got to help you and it was really, really cool. But you know, we had a speaker a couple years ago and Bill helped pick him, John O'Leary, you remember him. And John is a New York Times bestseller, fantastic speaker, and his whole theme is life is ultimately about who you serve, not about money, not about things, and I feel well served, and I know everyone else here does, so thank you. to this um, next segment. I'm gonna put this out there again. Sam Clark, if you would like to share, um, feel free, but we will 
you, would you like to share just a few thoughts? You're welcome to do so. It's been a long time. Thanks, Sam. Thanks very much. So look, um, what we'd like to do now uh, before we go into the eulogy is just to take a moment to reflect. We want to watch. I know uh, many of you saw the video as you were walking in, but we'd just like to take a few moments to just watch the video and just reflect on Bill's life for a minute, okay? So let me just pause for a minute and thank uh, Roger and Diane and Arch and Benny for all just remarkable comments about Bill's life. And I'd like to just, you know, uh, Bill said the celebration. And in fact, there's a, Bill was very specific, it, uh, the session, the, the uh, celebration after this service, that was Bill's, this was Bill's direction. He said, after this service, he said, let's go outside and, uh, and, and let everybody celebrate. So I want to celebrate his life right now with a round of applause. So I'm going to share for a few moments with you um, just some thoughts about Bill's life um, after being with him for a long time. And, and I first want to start by uh, encouraging Brian and Karen. Uh, and I just, I really want to, and look, in five years, you've lost both parents. So I want to encourage you in this moment. 
that you had some, you you had awesome parents, and and I don't have to tell you this because you know it. They're just they were just so full of love. You could see it in the in the video. You could everybody has talked about Bill, um, but just wonderful wonderful parents. And I would I would encourage you to emulate the love that they shared with everybody. Um, and, and let me tell you, when you do that, you will not go wrong. You will not go wrong. And so, um, Brian, to watch you take care of your father in his final days, kudos. I know he's proud of you. And Karen, unwavering love, thank you for loving him. Uh, Bill, Bill was a, Bill, it, it, look, he loved being loved. He might not have said it, but I knew him that well. Um, but I also want to encourage you in this moment to accept God's peace. Because, you know, the word says, in this life you will have trouble. But Jesus said, Take heart, because I have overcome the world. And he said, his peace, I give to you. My peace, I give to you. So accept his peace in this moment. And other family members, uh, take solace. And that Bill is resting. Bill was excited now. Someone already said it. he was excited because he had made peace with his life. And that's really important. His soul, his soul was right. I'm going to share a few, uh, in a few minutes about that. Um, but before I go further also, I want to thank all of you for attending. Bill was, you know, if you knew Bill, you know, he was, he's honored by people just loving him, you know, that he didn't, he wouldn't say it, but you knew he, the fact that Roger came from the West Coast, the fact that Don Jacobson came from New Jersey, the fact that all of you um, interrupted your Saturday to come here on his behalf, he appreciates it. And he's smiling. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's smiling. Um, I met Bill in 1987, Walmart. Lawrence, South Carolina. And um, I was an area manager. And we were getting ready to start up Walmart, million square feet. And before we actually started shipping, Bill and I made such a connection that he promoted me to ops manager. David Madden was on my team. I'll never will forget this is that there was a timeline to begin shipping and they turned on the fire hose about two to three weeks early. And so we got bombarded by freight. <laughs> so much so that, you know, we in Walmart, you found you, were walk, you worked on the floor as managers, leaders, and, and one day Bill and I were out in what we call the non-con area. And we were struggling. And I said, I said something like, Bill, don't fire me. Because <laughs> I thought I was going to get fired because, you know, things were just tough. And Bill um, put his hand on my shoulder. And he said, Elijah, we're in this thing together. I was early in my career. I was probably 30 years old. I said, you know what? I can work with this man forever. So when he left Walmart, guess what? I went behind him. And Sam remembers that I was there for nine months at Standard, and I left. Went to Balsham and came back. I came back because Bill said, Elijah, if you're going to, because I was getting ready to leave and go to work for a 3PL, he said, look, if you're going to work for a 3PL, come back to Standard. But this time he said, 
I want you to work in business development. I said, what? <laughs> Sell business, I don't, I can't do business development. I was in operations, man, I love operations. He said, I, he said, you'd be good at it. He said, I don't care if you don't sell a stick of freight for the first year. <laughs> he said, just do it. Bill, if that's what you think, that's what I'll do. And it's worked out pretty well. And I, I think the message is there, as Diane and others have said, Bill was so inspiring. He had an influence that was like a magnet. And he had a way of getting you to get things done. He just, he just had that way about him. I'm gonna just, just very quickly, some of his gifts, many of them have already been talked about. The gift of being able to connect with people, the, the ability to inspire, his smile. I love that when Bill walked into a room, I felt secure. There was just something about him. When he walked into a room, his smile, that's, even, even in his retirement day, he would come to Sunland, and I would just love it because he was in the building. That's, that's how I felt about Bill, and I think that's how most people felt about an exceptional leader, just exceptional. To go to a dinner with him, with a customer, and see him be able to talk about anything. You gotta take his smoke while he's at, even at dinner. He can, he, he's gonna take a minute to go get that smoke. But, 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 but he'd come back and he'd be right back in the game. That was Bill Gates. That was Bill. Bob McCullough will appreciate this. We would labor for, and Dave Madden, we would labor for hours on some rates. And then we'd go to Bill, and Bill in about five minutes will get to the right answer. Usually on the back of a napkin. napkin. That was Bill. And, 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 and a lot of times you would think, yeah, he's, he's wrong. Every now and then he might be, but not many. His instinct was remarkable. Just remarkable. If he said it, you, you almost should take it to the bank. That was Bill. My daughter asked me several years ago, and I said, I don't remember if she was in high school or when, but she asked me this question once. She said, she said Dad, who is your best friend? I said, hmm. Maybe that's just a question daughters ask their fathers that, uh, you know, she, I said, hmm. And I thought about it, I said, you know what? Bill Gates is my best friend. And she looked at me and she said, how can your boss be your best friend? And I don't know that I had the right words to tell her, but, I, but, but what I'm gonna say now as I bring this to a close, you know, I, I, I know why. And um, he, was, he, was a, he was a great leader and I was hungry for leadership. He was a great mentor and I needed mentoring. He was a great encourager and I needed encouraging. When I got an attaboy from Bill, man, I would tuck that thing away. That's just, that's just how it was. And we had that kind of relationship. There is a scripture, Hebrews 13 and 16. And I want to I want to bring this, I want to I want to introduce this because I think it's important. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. This is the author of the book of Hebrews who had written these words focusing on people who were being persecuted and he was encouraging them in their faith. And at the end of this book, 13 chapters, he said, after all this, do good and to share what you have 
for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Bill did good. He did good. God is pleased. God is pleased. And when you do good, those are sacrifices. Those are offerings to God. And that's what's, that's what's important. And as I watched Bill in his final days, and really before his final days, I'm, I said this before, I'll say it again as I begin to close. What's important is your soul. And Bill began to talk. And he and I had many conversations about his faith. And that, that and those discussions were so fruitful. Brian and Doug, I don't know if you caught this, but the day, that Friday, we were in around Bill's bed. And Bill was in such pain when we walked into the room, when I walked into the room. And I could, I could barely stand it. And I pulled out my phone and I began to read from the scriptures. I didn't tell him, I didn't say where it was coming from, I just began to read the scriptures. And Bill was in such pain when he finally had a moment. Doug, I don't know if you heard, I didn't say anything. He said, Psalm, Psalm. He knew that I was reading from the Psalms. That was Bill's way of letting me know. He said, Elijah, I got this thing. And Doug, when you and I walked out into his living room, into his living area, there was a Bible sitting there as well that looked like it had been used. The reality is that Bill was really, he really connected with his face. And look, we're in this church, and, and Pastor Ryan is going to share with you. We're in this church because Bill, when he left Greenville, decided that he didn't want to go back to Greenville, the church. He wanted to, a church that was close by. I'm talking about his faith. He made peace. The Saturday before he passed away, he said, y'all, I'm almost excited. Because I'm sure he was looking forward to reuniting with Ruthann. Doug, I have to tell you this, Doug, before I finish this. Um, Doug, you touched me so much. When Brian, we were all in that room just before Karen got there, Doug. And I walked into the room and really before now, I hadn't seen Doug in about, I don't know, 10, 14, I can't remember. God has a way of bringing people together. And so when I walked into the room, Doug was by Bill's side and Brian. And Doug was holding Bill's hands. And as, as Brian was caring for him, for him and then Doug and I walked into another room. Doug, I'll never forget this. And Doug and I were really on a different subject because we were just taking a pause for a minute. But Doug, were talk, he was talking about former coaches. And he, and, he, and, he, and he used this quote that I'll never forget. He said, the greatest gift you can give someone is the gift of believing in them. Diane, you said that a few minutes ago as well. Then it became real clear to me why Bill was my best friend. Because he believed in me. And I believed in him. And when you, and when you give someone the gift of believing in them, you lift them up. You encourage them. And when you give people, teams, that gift of believing in them, then you see why Bill accomplished what he accomplished. He gave people gifts. I'm gonna share what will, uh, I didn't know it at the time, um, but this was my last text with Bill. And I didn't even, in fact, I didn't even know it till this morning when I was thinking about whether or not, you know, as I share about Bill's faith, because it was very, very important. 
again at the end of the day, <laughs> and I'm going to sit down, okay? I knew Bill was getting baptized on Easter Sunday. This is very important. And he was excited about it. And, and, and the fact of the matter is, I wanted to be here, but I had other obligations. And, but on Monday, I sent him a note. I said, happy Monday, Bill. I'm sure the baptism went well yesterday. And I said some other things. I said, I know your pastor described this and explained this. And, it's, and I said, you are a new creation. Bill responded back. He said, thanks, Elijah. He said, it was somewhat cathargic for me. He said, came close to crying, but held it off. He said, they showed me a nice picture of Ruth Ann and me doing the baptism. So she was with me as always. Good grief. Because really, when you, saw, when you saw them, usually, especially at conferences, they were together. And then he says, oh crap, here comes the tears again. <laughs> he said, I just have to remind myself that I was blessed to have her in my life. As, and here he was encouraging me again, as you must do with Toby. He said, I love you, Elijah. God bless and stay strong. That was, a, that was April, that was April 6th. The morning after Easter, I will, cherish, I will treasure and cherish his words forever. Brian and Karen, the reason I was so content in making sure this goes well is because most of the people who have worked with me know that when Bill Gates says something to me, and I'm that way with all of my leaders, I honor my leaders, and Bill was, he was just that. And so when Bill says something, I'm going to carry out his commands as much as I can. Final thing is that I'm going to do a song. And um, I um, have not sung in this environment, and when I say this environment, kind of and with business people in a long time. Um, but um, I'm honoring, I, I want to honor Bill because I think Bill would appreciate this.
Bill, but we will see him on the other side. Amen. I think your last words were, never follow Elijah. <laughs> I wish I would have heard those last words before we put this service together. <laughs> Elijah, well done. The words of that song, I think, are a great way for us to close the service because he looked beyond my faults and saw my need. I, I think that those lyrics work on two different levels for this funeral this celebration, because I think it speaks to how Elijah saw Bill. I, I think we heard in Elijah, he said, he believed in me, and it made all the difference for Elijah, because Bill looked beyond Elijah's faults and saw his needs. He believed in Elijah, and it made all the difference for Elijah, but the reason that this is a celebration is because Bill believed in Jesus, and it made all the difference for Bill. Bill accomplished some incredible things, and I, I sat back there and I was really envious of those of you who have known Bill for years and years and years, and incredibly envious of you two who have spent your whole life with him. Because I, I was sitting back there thinking, man, I wish I had known this guy longer. I had so much I could have learned from him. Uh, in, in a period where the church is going into a, 